Heather Akram here and in this tutorial I'm going to share with you how to set up a simple cat rig for a character model in 3ds Max and when we're talking about cat we're not talking about the animal that goes meow um, what we're really talking about is the character animation toolkit in 3d studio Max now you may have heard of terms of boning and skinning and things of that nature well the cat system is kind of a pre-built system it extended a upon the inverse schematics and hierarchy linking systems that had been around for quite a long time before that. And it utilizes those tool sets along with some other ones to make it really easy to set up sort of a skeletal system for your character, link your model to it, and then create some basic walk cycles that are already pre-made for you inside of 3ds Max. So with that, let's get started. So here we are in 3ds Max. I'm using the 2020 version. Uh, but what I want to start off with is with a model can rig. I'm just using a sample model. And I'm going to open that model here. And I'm actually going to illustrate a issue that you may run into when you're setting up the cat rig. Now this model actually already has a rig on it. And it right now it's asking me to change some of the color settings because I'm using a different uh, monitor setup. But what you may run into is this file units mishmash question. And this is if you have your max units set up to something different than the file. Now notice the file is in meters and it's saying that my system units for max are in inches and do I want to replace this. This is very important. If you're starting this project, you do want to go ahead and rescale the file to match your units. Otherwise, the cat system's not going to work correctly. So you want to make sure that you're doing this correctly. Now, if you're starting from scratch, or um, if you've already got meters set up, that should work fine. So if I press OK, um, we'll, it'll take a few moments to load up here. But here's my character in all the viewports. Now, like I said, this project, I intentionally set the system units to inches to kind of show you that warning sign. I'm actually going to uh, go ahead and uh, go to customize here and unit setup. And you can see that my units are in inches right now. But typically, especially if you're creating these projects to be exported into Unity, you should already have your project set up in meters. So if I set this up in meters and press OK, and I actually, I'm going to reopen the file. So if I reopen this file, I'm not going to save anything. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say reopen. And this time around, it doesn't ask for the rescale because my system units and the units for the file are the same. They were both created in meters. Now, I do have a video that uh, goes through the process of setting up your project, especially if you're going to be setting up your project for exporting to Unity, how to set up your units and how to make sure the project is properly created in order for this to work. So if you've done that in your project that you're you're starting with or your max setup is in meters already, you won't get that error. If you are in anything other than meters, you will want to go ahead and rescale just for the purposes of getting this cat system to work correctly. Now that we have our project opened and everything, you can see that we have in here a character model. This is just a prefab model that is available in the Autodesk libraries. And we have a cat rig on this character. We're going to go ahead and delete this rig so that we can create our own. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select that big triangle that represents the base of the cat. And we'll hit delete. That way it is out of there. And I wholeheartedly suggest that you save often. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do save copy as. It's going to put an 01 uh, after the name of my file. I'm going to do save. 
And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm, as we're working with our CAT system, we don't want to mess up the model and we don't want to accidentally select the model or move the model or anything like that. So I'm going to select all. It doesn't really matter which view I'm in. I'm just going to grab a window. You can see that we have the main body as one mesh and we also have the hair as its own mesh. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use Alt X which basically goes into x-ray mode. It allows me to see through the character and not have to worry about the materials that are on the character that may be blocking my view. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna do free selection. And this again allows me to keep the model in one place and not accidentally select the model because we'll be working with the cat rig here momentarily. And now what we're gonna do is go to cat rig and to do that, you're going to go into helpers and in the drop down, we're going to choose cat objects. And there's a couple of different things here. We want the cat parent is the option that we want selected. And if I uh, scroll down here, there are different options of the types of characters that are already built in and rigged inside of the cat system, depending on what it is you want. We're actually gonna start with a base human. So I'm gonna select the base human and somewhere in my top view, I'm just gonna click and drag out a base. And as you, as you notice I'm dragging out, you notice my bone structure gets bigger. And I wanna to try to get it so that my bone structure is roughly the same size as my character. The most important part is the pelvis because the pelvis controls the majority of the mesh model. So you wanna get your pelvis uh, in pretty much the right position and then everything else we can kind of uh, play with once we have that in the right position. So I've got my base human cat object set up and now we're going to manipulate the rig itself. Now the first thing that I'm going to want to do is to make sure that my cat system is pretty much centered on the character. We know our character has been placed in the zero zero position and I want to make sure that the rig is also in that location. So with the base human rig selected, I'm going to go to my move tool and I'm going to go down to the bottom here. I'm just going to set these values all to zero and that'll make sure that it's centered up. And I can be in any one of these views and I'll, I'll play around with a couple of them, but I think I want to go ahead and uh, zoom in here on my left view here. And we're going to start by lining up the bones. If we take a look actually, let me come in here to the perspective real quick. And what you can see is that the bones are protruding out of the character in the legs and obviously the arms and the head don't match up at all. So we're going to want to change that. And again, I can do this in a couple of different views, but uh, let's just, while we're here in this shaded view, let me go ahead and go to the left side. And I can see that the foot is passing through the foot currently. Now we only have to worry about manipulating the bones on one side of the character and then we can copy those to the other side of the character if your character is symmetrical. If your character is asymmetrical then you'll have to do each side separately. But in our case we are going to go ahead and get started by changing the platform for the right foot. So the platform is basically where ground is for the character's foot. And we're going to start by rotating and moving this into place. So I'm going to move the platform a little bit up and back. So I'm going to move it up and back a little bit. So now we're seeing that the heel is in the right spot and really what we're looking at are the joint points are the joint points in the right spot so this ankle joint is that really where the ankle is and again i need to rotate a little bit to be able to see this and we're, we're going to manipulate all these a little bit more so um, in fact i can select the foot uh, bone itself 
and I can play around with its rotation a little bit. So really what we're looking at is getting that ankle point in the right position. Now that we have it in pretty much where we need it, we can play with the other points of the object or the other bones. So again, you might have to play around with your rotation to see where you want things, but I'm gonna move the upper leg here. I'm gonna move it back. Uh, you can also play with rotation as well as move and you might want to play depending on how you, it, it looks whether you want to hit the change the parent or change the child object so my upper leg controls the whole leg really so i can turn most of it up here and get it into position and then my foot looks like it still kind of needs to be rotated um, or just moved into place. It just needs to be moved. And it just takes a little bit of playing around with. And we're basically going to do a similar setup for the arms as well. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to go and move on to the head object. We do want to make sure that our rib cage is exactly where it needs to be. And you may find as you're rotating these objects around, Right now we are doing the rotation and everything by the view, uh, but you may find that it's easier if you change the coordinates reference to local. So if I'm doing rotate here, you can see I'm getting a little bit different settings of where my X and Y are uh, versus whether I do view or local. So local gives me a little bit different point of view um, that can can be helpful uh, in trying to get these positioned where you need them to be. Once you've messed with any of the rigs though and changed the coordinates, you always want to go back to your view so that you're using the same coordinates for all your objects. And now that I have the right side of my character set up, I'm going to copy this over to the left side. And to do that, I'm going to do this bone by bone. So I'm going to select my upper arm item here, and I'm going to go to the modify tab. And under the modify tab, you can see that I have a limb set up and I can do copy limb settings. So then I can go to the upper arm for the left side and I can do paste mirror because I want the reverse of it or the reflection of it on the other side. And that does the reverse on the other side. And it may get it pretty close, if not exact. It looks like it's pretty exact. I'm gonna rotate this just a little bit because you may need to make minor adjustments. I think they're pretty good. I think I just wanna pull this up and over a little bit right there, yeah. And so I'll go ahead and do that one more time because I've made some changes. I'm gonna copy that, click my left, paste, there we go. I got those in the right place. Same thing for the legs. I'll click my upper leg, hit copy, go to my left leg and hit paste. And you can see that it copied the positioning of the feet and everything for both uh, the right and left. So now they are symmetrical. Now there are other elements that you can change as far as the bones. We've been uh, playing with the rotation and position of them, but maybe you want them to affect a larger cavity of the model. And so one of the options that you can do is you can actually scale your bones. So here you can see I can scale the rib cage to take up a little bit more space. I'm actually going to undo that because for this basic model, you don't really need a lot of bones taking up space. It, the, the mesh is going to find them. So it's okay in this sense. Uh, one of the things that I am going to want to do is I'm going to want to go ahead and play with dividing out some bones. So I'm going to go to the foot right here. And you can see that the foot right now is just one giant block. Well, what about the toes? You don't 
actually when you're walking you don't just land unless you're flat footed uh, on the the whole of your foot your your toes hit first and you kind of bend your foot up so how do we simulate this well if i select the foot right here and i go to the modify tab you can see there is an option called digits so i can actually change the number of digits um on this object so i can say that instead of one zero i have one digit once i have that one digit in there it actually created two other bone features here and really you can see it says that i have the base bone and i have two i actually only want one i don't need two i only need one and what i want to do is actually decrease this so that it's really more the size of just the toes here. So I'm going to bring this in heavily. And I'm also going to slightly decrease the size of our foot. There we go. And so one of the things that I can do is change the angle of how we're walking right now. So what I want to do now is I can actually rotate the foot up and this will give us a little bit better angle as to where our toes would normally land. And because I rotated it, it kind of moved my, ang uh, my ankle joint. So I need to get that back in position. And if I rotate over, I want to make sure that uh, my leg has not totally distorted, which I need to go in and adjust right there. That looks great. And so now I have it so that I have some toes as well as a foot. And again, because I've made changes to the right side and I want to keep my right and left side symmetrical, I'm going to need to make changes to the left side. I'm going to, I don't know. And notice not only did it pace the settings of the position but it also added that those toes down at the bottom and I only added sort of a second platform for the toes not the individual toes because they're going to be in the shoes you're never going to see them we could do something similar with the hands as well and actually make fingers and limbs um, we don't have to do this for this particular model and most models typically don't simply because the character uh, isn't going to necessarily wiggle their fingers in our animation. Instead, um, the hands are just going to kind of move very basically. And if we need to change that, if we were doing more of a complex animation, we could play with that. But for this basic rig, we don't have to create any digits for the hands, but it would work almost identically. We would select the palm and we would go in and we would tell it how many limbs to create and then we can scale and resize all of those bones. And that is how you set up the bones for your cat rig. In the next tutorial, we're going to continue on by setting up the skin for our cat rig. I hope you found this lesson informative. And don't forget to check out other lessons and tutorials on the channel. So what are you waiting for? Get creative today!